So we're going to be talking about Ember modifiers. Uh, you can all hear me correctly, right? Can you hear me clearly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, at my Ember Conf talk, I had a little bit of modifiers in there, and people got real excited. And I started talking about Ember modifiers at my job, and people got real excited. So I'm like, apparently people want to hear more about modifiers. So as we are upgrading toward Octane, and these guides all got updated. I've been trying to read through all the different guides, documents, all the things that the learning team has put together. It's really fantastic. And as I was scrolling through, I was going through core concepts and components, and I hit this template, lifecycle, DOM, and modifiers section. I started reading down all these different things. And if you go down far enough, it talks about manipulating attributes, conditionals, blah, blah, blah and you get to event handlers. So this is where there's the most probably changes, I would say, in terms of writing your templates uh, with angle bracket notation and how you're writing them with all the, the, ats, to, um, all the ats. And we're kind of getting rid of the, the action helper eventually, but it's not deprecated yet. A lot of things are in flux, right? And it just kind of starts talking about all of a sudden during event handlers, it starts using modifiers without really even telling you too much. You actually have to go down here to where Tomster says, <laughs> and Tomster starts talking about element modifiers and how they appear inside of these free floating curly braces instead of opening tags, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so this is the best description that I've been able to find so far of what a modifier really is. An element modifier works by passing the element to a function that can do anything with it. So very general. This is different than a helper, where a helper would typically output like some text, like maybe a capitalize or a humanize kind of helper that might take a string, um, change it around so it looks a little bit more legible to the user or manipulate a URL, stuff like that. This is more about, it knows, every element knows about the, sorry, every modifier knows about the element that it's on and it can do stuff with that. So the first example that we have here, event handlers, starts talking about an increment count action and a button that's hooked up to it. So let's just go ahead and play with that. I have built a little Ember new um, app right here. And we're going to open up the application page right here. We've got our welcome page. And I'm going to make a playground component. So I'm just going to ever generate component. I'm just going to call it playground for now. So this gives us a little place to try out some of these things. I'm also going to make a class for it because I know I'm going to need some JavaScript in this case. The latest Ember makes a glimmer, uh, sorry, a glimmer component for you and does not by default unless you tell it to make a JS file. It's template only by default. Okay, so I'm gonna replace the welcome with my playground component. And we have nothing, woohoo! Okay, so start off with a hi there, just to make sure that I didn't mess up anything so far. Excellent, do a little bit of zoomy zoom. Cool, and this is where we're gonna start copying and pasting some code. And I'm going to take this, throw it on in there. And we it says that we'll have a count and an on-click action. And of course, it doesn't do anything yet because we don't have the JavaScript for it. And we can see here that the console, I'll make this a little bigger, the console is saying that you must pass a function as the second argument to the on modifier. So we don't actually have this increment. Fantastic. So we're going to open up our playground JavaScript file. We're going to add in our action and tract. And we're going to copy in our code down here. So now we have a tract variable that starts off as zero that we'll see render immediately. And we have an action bound to that count call. So now when I click on this, it'll just increment as you would expect. So it's super simple, but I love following some of these guide examples and really feeling how they work. 
the other nice thing is I can start playing around with this and I can be like, well, what else works? This looks like a very basic uh, event. So what if I do a mouse over? And I just move my mouse past it. And as I just kind of go past it without clicking on it, it updates. I can also do things like focus. And whenever I focus on and off of it, it updates. So this is actually how I built a lot of the stuff I did for the, um, the EmberConf talk. I was using these event on modifiers. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I really like doing that. I like being able to play around with this and kind of see how that works. Um, as you scroll down this page even further, you'll get to the calling modifiers on first render section. And this starts talking about another, um, an add-on that you can install, Ember Render Modifiers. And in this example, they have a form and they have a did insert here where they do a focus and they try to focus in on an input automatically. So I'm gonna add that in here. Oh, Vim, there's my lovely Vim with that paste stuff that I love so much. I use Vim all the time, and yet uh, I find myself still hitting, especially during live demos, weird things I don't know how to get out of. Okay, I'm gonna copy in this focus event here as well. Now this works already. I should have mentioned that um, in order to do this, you need to actually install this uh, Ember render modifiers. And that's just like anything else. You would just run the Ember install, Ember render modifiers. And there's a bunch of other really nice examples in here of what they can do. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, but ultimately, what this is exposing to us is using Ember render modifiers. Uh, we can listen for events, not, not just like on focus, but also lifecycle events like did insert. So now when I refresh the page, my focus automatically goes inside of this input which is very exciting and nice. Um, I've been using this a lot on some forms in our app because we have a lot of modals with forms inside of them. And it's not the greatest UI to have modals and forms and all that. So one way to make it a little bit nicer is to automatically put their focus into the first element. So I've been doing a lot of this. So th this is pretty all right. But even as the guides show, it's not ideal to have focus element down here all the time and every single place you ever want to use this. And so the guides show us how to make our own modifier to abstract this into an autofocus. So I'll get rid of this JavaScript code here, and I will just change this into a autofocus, just like they show. And nothing renders. And if we look here in our console, it says unexpected modifier autofocus, because we didn't make it yet. So we're going to make that. First thing you would do is install Ember modifier. I've already went and done that. And we will make, using the generator, Ember generate a modifier called autofocus. Just like a component, it will make us a, a file to actually write that code and a test for it, which is really nice. We'll see this actually works again now, except it doesn't do any autofocusing for us, of course. We can open up the modifier autofocus. And we get a lot of things potentially passed in here, but we don't use most of them, except element. Element is uh, what we want to do, of course. So inside of this function, we're just going to say element.focus, just some pure JavaScript. Page refreshes, and it works just like it did before. We can take this one step further. And we can add a test for this. It's like super easy to write a test for something like this. So I'm going to just move over to test. I'm going to filter down to autofocus. I'm going to zoom way out because that is crazy bananas. OK. So it's got this default test in here. But really what we're trying to test is it will set focus to uh, the element. And we will change this to an input. 
So instead of asserting, okay, true, we're gonna assert something like an equal, and we want to find the input. And in order to do that, we're gonna have to import our find up here in our test helpers. And we're gonna make sure that that input that it finds there is equal to the document.active element of the entire document. Test runs and it passes, but just to be good developers, we're going to make sure that we can make the test fail by commenting out the code that should make it work. Okay, excellent. So if we comment out the focus code, our test fails, put that back in there, and it works. So now we have an autofocus modifier that we wrote ourselves that has a test for it. So uh, that's pretty nice. Similarly, um, let's see. So this is some code that I actually wrote for the EmberConf accessibility talk, where I wrote a modifier for key up, and also I did one for key down. And the entire modifier is just these 15 lines of code, and that's with spacing. So most of the code is just adding an event listener for the key up event, and then removing the event listener. The listener itself is just a very simple function listening for the event and comparing the, the key to the desired key. And then we're destructuring the key that got pressed out of the event object from the modifier. So pretty simple stuff, making sure that it's equivalent and then firing off whatever function was passed to it. Similarly, I wrote some tests for that. And it's just a lot more of the same stuff that we just did a moment ago. Um, these tests, we're making sure that you can like fire off a function when a key is pressed. And so we would render out a div, for example, and then we would trigger a key event on that, on that element right there of key up. And we verified the step was fired for key up. And we're doing that assert step right inside of here. And then I did another test down here just to make sure that the exact key was being pressed. So we did enter key pressed, enter key pressed, and we ignored spacebar being pressed, for example. So modifiers are pretty simple overall to work on, and uh, I find them to be really exciting. I want to um, show a couple other really awesome things that you can do with modifiers and kind of get away from some of the stuff that's readily available in the guides. So out there also is Ember Ref Modifier. And I'll scroll down here. So Ref Modifier is a little bit funky, but also pretty cool. So I could reference, for example, this button I already have here, or I could reference this input. And what it'll do is, if I reference this input, I could say ref this. So I can assign to the context of this this element into a variable I'll call my input. And what that'll do is I can now have access to that either within my JavaScript, I believe, uh, definitely within my template code here. I can say something like this dot my input dot tag name. And the tag name of the element that I assigned here is able to be pulled out. Tag name's not the most useful example, but if I did something more akin to like a data, like a name attribute, trying to put in some like dynamic data, for example, so I can say like foo, and then I can actually pull that out with data sets, just using raw JavaScript here, data sets.name. Uh-oh, that didn't work. Is it data set? Yes, it is. So I can actually pull out that attribute from the element using like a data set, for example. You can imagine how this could be pretty useful to pass around some, some stuff within a template or to refer to like a video element and, or to like maybe the last button pressed you could assign a reference to. They have a lot of good examples in here, but I've got to admit this is not my favorite add-on because a lot of this is borderline magic. Like, I still don't know what this does. Like, it works, but this stuff's crazy. So I'm going to move away from this right now because I don't know everything about Ember Ref Modifier, but I just want to point out there that it's pretty cool. Um, Ember Focus Trap 
is something that we've been using at my job a lot. I'm trying to help with modal accessibility. And it would take too long to really do a full modal right here. But if we install Ember Focus Trap, and we did something kind of like, let's add in another input. And I'm going to do another input outside of the form. Try to gather some stuff here. And I'll do like a horizontal rule, just so it's like really obvious. So like I've got, this is a form here with these two elements, and this is a, not a form. So you can imagine like this maybe is a modal, and the thing outside of the form we don't want to be able to get inside of. With something like a focus trap modifier, we actually can do a lot of heavy lifting very quickly. So I can tab through this, and I never tab to the element that's outside of this form. It's actually now trapped within this form uh, element right here. And I could add in some dynamic logic if I wanted to, to turn this on and off. So uh, we like Ember Focus Trap a lot. It helps us pass by a lot more of our modal accessibility kind of um, goals. So that's really exciting. And the last one I'm going to show you all before I kind of pop off of here is Ember Auto Stash modifier. I really like this one. And I think it makes the most sense to use their demo because it's way better than anything I could put together. So if you install Ember Auto Stash modifier, you can use code something like this where you can just add an element modifier of auto stash and give it a unique identifier like the model ID, for example. And then it will try to remember these things. It'll like stash it away for you as you change routes. So I can say like first, I can hit this checkbox. I can say text area. I can go to the second route where I've got a brand new form, put some more stuff in there. I can go back to the route one and it remembers this. It remembers everything that was in here and here and here, even though I'm changing routes. So that's a lot of power for not a lot of code. And I'm really excited to see what other Ember modifiers people start coming up with, start adding into their own apps to abstract away a lot of heavy component logic into these small little element modifiers. Um, and then just to wrap up one more time, I just wanted to say all this stuff is relatively really basic. It's just modifiers. And all they really are, once again, as Tomster says, is an element modifier works by passing an element to a function that can do anything with it. So go nuts, have fun, and uh, yeah, check out some Ember modifiers today. Any questions? No, that was fun. That was fun. That was fun. I hadn't, I haven't done much with all my modifiers yet. They're, they do, you got just got me excited. Yeah, no, they look really, they look really simple and straightforward, but uh, but super powerful. It, it's, um, yeah, the fact that I haven't written Ember in like eight months and I can follow along is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think the focus trap that was that was amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and it's super obvious, like, because it's in the template, it's really obvious to track what's going on there, which I think is really cool. Yeah, I find it puts a lot of the logic at the correct level of abstraction. Yeah. Yeah, you end up, I mean, previously you'd end up with, like, that focus trap logic all bundled into your, like, component JS, and it doesn't really feel like it belongs there, but it, that's where it lives. And then you have it in like several of components, several different components, right? Or you put it in a mix in and mix that in, which feels gross. And or you have it in some obscure helper that does some weird thing that you have to like pass into the template. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, no, that's pretty cool. That auto stash thing is really cool. I'm going to show our developers that because there's, mm -hmm. I can think of an immediate use right now that we have that I would love to use that for. So <laughs> product owner slash designer that thing. Yeah.